Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum everyone. We start by praising Allah, thanking him, and asking to bless and protect our prophet. Welcome to our 10th session of Keys to the Divine Compass. Today we're going to be covering the 10th juz, sipara number 10, which again includes two surahs, Surah Al-Anfal, surah number 8, and Surah Al-Tawbah, surah number 9. Today I want to cover uh, one very powerful, impactful ayah from Surah number 9, Surah Al-Tawbah, and this is verse number, ayah number 24. Allah, He tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say the following, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah, he tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O my Prophet, go and tell the believers, if your parents, your children, your siblings, your spouses, your families, five types of people, your wealth that you have earned, the deals and contracts that you're worried might fail, and or the properties that you love and enjoy, if these eight things or any one of these eight things is more or are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and fighting and striving in the path of Allah, then just wait for the decision of Allah and without a doubt Allah does not guide transgressive people. Allah, He makes this discussion of love very clear. Think about the following eight categories. Our parents, we love our parents. Our children, we love our children. Our siblings, we love our siblings. Our spouses, we love our spouses. Our families, we love our families. These are the closest people to us. As people, as human beings, we love them. We innately love them. Then he gives us another three categories of wealth. If the money that you have earned, the businesses or deals or contracts that you're afraid you might lose or they might fail, or the very homes that you live in and you own that you love and you're pleased with. If any one of these eight things or if all of these eight things are more beloved to you than Allah, do you love them more than Allah? Do you love them more than his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? May Allah bless and protect him. Do you love them more than fighting and struggling in Allah's path, willing to give up your life and your wealth for the sake of Allah? If you do, then just wait until the command of Allah comes. Just wait. But what does that mean? What, what is the command of Allah here? The command of Allah here can mean one of two things. Be it the punishment of Allah or be it the conquest of Makkah. Now, when we take it in the meaning of the conquest of Makkah, that is a very specific time that is referring to those companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those of whom were living in Makkah, and due to some of their love and attachment to their families and their homes, they didn't want to leave and do hijrah. They didn't want to migrate and abandon their families and homes to leave the city of Mecca to be able to move to al Madina al Munawwara and live with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and freely and comfortably practice their religion there. And so for some of them, Allah, He told them, if you love these things more than Allah and His Messenger, then fine, just wait until the conquest of Mecca. It's not good that you're in this situation, that you love them more than Allah and His Messenger, that you're not willing to migrate, you're not willing to give these up. So fine. Although you have to do a hijrah, hijrah is mandatory, just wait until the conquest of Mecca. Just wait. And again, this is said in a harsh tone. Or the second meaning is even more harsh then just wait until the punishment of Allah comes. If I love anything more than Allah and His Messenger, I am not in a good situation. How do I love something more than my Lord and Master Allah? How do I love someone or something more than the Messenger Allah sent to guide me? It doesn't make any sense. That's why it's being said in a harsh manner, wait until the punishment of Allah comes. How dare you, how could you love something more than Allah? How? But let's take a moment and think, what does it mean 
to love more or love less? What does it mean to love more and to love less? Right? There are four levels of balancing love. Number one, that I undoubtedly love Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa more than everything, more than anyone, any of those eight categories. I love them more, I obey them more, I listen to them more. There's never a conflict. I want to do something bad. Allah and His Messenger don't. I will not do it. My family, they want me to neglect the rights of Allah. Or I may be so in so in so engrossed in spending time with my spouse or my child that I miss a prayer. But I love Allah and His Messenger so much that I will be sure to obey them. And Allah says, earn your money in a clean, permissible way. But I love my wealth, but I love Allah more so that I will ensure that my wealth is clean and pure. I will gladly sacrifice worldly pleasures and luxuries and enjoyment if that means Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa be happy with me. That is truly loving Allah and His Messenger more. There's a second category. We're going down from here. Loving Allah and the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah bless and protect him less, but still fulfilling their rights. And deep down, I may love my parents more, I may love my wealth more, but I will still say, Allah, I love my wealth, I'm still going to pay the 2.5%. Allah, I love you know my child more, but I'm still going to make sure, I'll, I'll pray. I may not pray the best prayer. I may not pray in jama'ah at the masjid and congregation, but I'll still pray. I'll still pray. I will not completely negate the rights of Allah. It will just not be done in the most beautiful, most loving manner. And that is something I should work on. That is something I should work on. I may be praying. I may be fasting. I may be giving zakah. I may have good character. But it is not done with love or out of the... It is not as good and beautiful as it could be. I'm not going above and beyond expressing, manifesting my love for Allah and His Messenger. So I have to work on deepening, growing, enhancing, strengthening my love Allah and His Messenger so that they become my number one goal, my number one priority. As we continue down, loving Allah and the Prophet ﷺ less and as a result failing to fulfill their rights. This is unacceptable. I can never find myself in a position where I neglect the rights of Allah and His Messenger, that I fail to pray, that I fail to pay zakah, that I do out of my love of this world I or family or whoever or whatever, I do not fast. Or out of the love of my own ego and my own self, I lie or I backbite or that I'm arrogant. This is unacceptable. I have shown that I love myself so much more than Allah, I'm willing to disobey Allah. That is not appropriate. That requires me to do istighfar, seek Allah's forgiveness, and completely turn my life around and turn back to Him doing tawbah. I cannot continue my life in this state. I am open and susceptible to the punishment of Allah. I have to be real with myself. I have to learn about Allah. I have to fall in love with Allah. I have to obey Allah. The bare minimum, fine. Maybe I don't love Allah as much, but I can never not obey Him. I can never be neglectful in His obedience. I'm not saying that's okay to not love Allah, but I'm saying if we're in this situation of we're neglecting Allah's rights, let me start off by, all right, let me at least obey, and then I will work to love Him more. So much so that I will learn and grow and develop that Allah will be the most beloved to me. The fourth category, the most scary category, the most wretched category, somebody that doesn't have any love for Allah and His Messenger in their heart. They have no desire to give up their life or their wealth fighting and struggling in the path of Allah. If I am a Muslim, there has to be the tiniest bit of love for them in my heart. It, it, it cannot exist without it. It cannot exist without it. And so when I think about this love, Am I willing to sacrifice 15 minutes, 20 minutes of time with my family so that I can go and pray? That I can go to the masjid? Am I willing to sacrifice maybe one extra fancy meal because I need to pay the proper amount of zakah? Am I willing to give up certain 
profits, certain investments, certain financial transactions. Although I will make more money because Allah said, no, that type of transaction is impermissible. Am I willing to obey Allah and his messenger? Even if that means I have to sacrifice some time with my family, some time or some amount of my wealth. And everything has its due right. Me taking care of my family is a right given to me by Allah. So I can never uh, 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 mismatch these priorities. I can never tell Allah, Allah, I'm taking care of my family, what you told me to do, so I'm not going to pray. Allah says you can do both and be excellent in both. You can be the most loving and caring and responsible mom or dad, brother or sister, son or daughter, uh, husband or wife. And still at the same time, be the most excellent worshiper of Allah. Be the most generous person. Be someone with the most beautiful character. Be somebody that fasts and prays at night. These are not mutually exclusive. Too many times we have pigeonholed ourselves. I either spend time with my child or I go to work to take care of my child or I go pray. We have turned this into a fight where it's, there is time for prayer and I should pray as best as I can. And I earn my wealth in the most permissible way. And I do not work so little that I become uh, 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 commit fraud at work. Nor do I work so much that I neglect the rights of Allah or my family. Nor do I spend so much time with my family that my work or my worship is neglected. Nor do I spend so little time with my family that my family feels that I am neglecting them. We have rights due to all of them. And when done properly, we are obeying Allah in all three scenarios. Because he told us, keep your amanat and your responsibilities and work and provide for your family or take care of your family, depending on the role. And be good to your family and worship. These are all ways of obedience to him. So if we prioritize or we neglect one, it is usually from a sickness or disease or misbalance in our own hearts. May Allah help us to keep and maintain this balance. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he emphasize these points about true love by telling us that uh, he said لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين that none of you will truly believe your iman, your faith will not be 100% complete until I, meaning the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam am more beloved to you than your own parents than your own children than all of humanity I can have Iman, I can have faith, I can have belief, but it will not be complete, it will not be perfect until I love him more than anyone and everyone else. And he also said in another narration that ثَلَاثٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ وَجَدَ حَلَاوَةَ الْإِيمَانِ That there are three qualities, three traits that if somebody has, they will have tasted the sweetness of Iman. The first one that he mentioned is أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا the first quality that he said that Allah and his messenger are more beloved to this individual than anyone, anything else. Then he continued and he said, وَأَنْ يُحِبَّ الْمَرْءَ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ That you love somebody else for the sake of Allah, not for any other reason, not for any worldly reason. And the last one he said, وَأَنْ يَكْرَهَ أَنْ يَعُودَ فِي الْكُفْرِ كَمَا يَكْرَهُ أَنْ يُقْذَفَ فِي النَّارِ That this person would hate to become a disbeliever after having been guided, just like they would hate to be thrown into the fire. But the first point he said that they love Allah and His Messenger more than anyone and anything else. I can love, Allah tells us by saying, Ahabba ilaykum, establishing, I know that you love your parents. I know that you love your children. I know that you love your families. I know that you enjoy your wealth. But they should never be more beloved to you than Allah. There should never be a conflict in, do I obey my family? Do I seek more wealth and as a result disobey Allah? That conflict should never happen. Allah and His Messenger will always take priority because I should love them the most. May Allah allow us to truly love Allah and His Messenger more than anything and anyone else that we are the most obedient and devout. And as a result, we taste the sweetness, the delight, of Iman. I mean.
سبحان الله بحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحانك وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك اللهم صل وسلم عليه وعلى اله